Hey guys, it's me, Bad Grisham, and thanks for clicking on my gaming PC build. The prices of the builds for this month are 500 600 750 and and $1,000. If you want to see a special video with the fifth price point, give me a suggestion down in the comment section. Today I'm going to show you a $1,000 gaming PC that will get you into the world of PC gaming, and make sure you stay there. Whether it's a gift or it's a personal build, this is going to be the best possible PC that I can make at this price point, and will let you play every game you throw at it at high settings, including the more resource heavy games like Battlefield 4, Watch Dogs, and Titanfall. Some of the older and less resource heavy games like Skyrim, South Park The Stick of Truth, and DayZ should be able to be maxed out at top settings with no issues, and any older games will be able to run maxed out as well. The graphics card in this system should be able to last a long time before an upgrade is actually needed, so with that being said, let's get started with the build. For the processor, I chose the AMD FX8350. This is an 8-core processor clocked at 4GHz, and it's actually very easy to overclock. This is an octa-core processor, and it's recommended for games like Battlefield 4 that take use of the 8-core design. More games in the future will be utilizing extra cores, so this is an excellent processor to get started with. The 8 cores are also useful if you plan on doing any video editing, as the extra cores can really boost performance in that area. The FX8350 will run you about $175. Should you want to overclock, or just to keep your PC a little bit cooler, I recommend using the Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO. If you plan on overclocking at all, never use the stock cooler, as it can lead to extreme heat to your CPU and can damage your build. So using an aftermarket cooler will help keep your PC running cool and stable. If you don't plan on overclocking and you want this build to just be a little bit cheaper, you don't need to add this into your final purchase. The Hyper 212 EVO will run you about $30. For a motherboard, I chose the Gigabyte GA990FXAUD3. This is an amazingly good motherboard for this build, as it comes with all the extras you'll ever need in a motherboard. It has 4 RAM slots, which is useful here, I'm going to add a little bit more RAM in the future, 8 USB 2 ports, 2 USB 3 ports, and a very well made BIOS. It's an overall an amazingly solid motherboard with a bunch of extras for about $125. For the graphics card I chose the 3GB Gigabyte Radeon R9 280X. Based on some benchmarks, baseline R9-280X that is an overclock should yield about 70 frames per second on Ultra at 1080p playing Battlefield 4. It'll run just about anything you throw at it and this card is simply a great choice for this build. You can get it for about $290. Now memory isn't that hard of a component to go with, so it just went with an 8GB stick of Crucial Ballistic Sports DDR3 RAM. It's rated at 1600MHz, which is plenty for your games and some multitasking. But unfortunately the price of RAM is constantly fluctuating. But as of right now, you have to spend about $70 for an 8 gig stick. Hard drives are always very simple components to pick, as they usually say the same. And once again, I'm just going to go with a 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue. The Caviar Blue is a very reliable hard drive, and a terabyte is plenty of space for your games, movies, music, pictures, just about anything you need to store. It's a great fit for anything that you need, and there's a small difference between the Caviar Blue and the Caviar Black. And that's about a $20 difference. Unless you get a really good deal or you just want a small bump in speed, you can go with the black. But if not, you'll be perfectly fine just going with the blue. The Caviar Blue will run in about $60. An SSD is one of the best additions you can add to any build, as it can boot up your OS quicker and you can store a few things that you want to run faster. Some great games to add to an SSD would be in any open world games, as the speed is faster and the load times are not as bad as they would be on a regular hard drive. For the SSD, I recommend using a 120GB Kingston HyperX 3K drive. It offers great performance for a 120GB SSD, and it comes in around $75. Next is the power supply, which I believe is the most important part of any build, mainly because you need power to run your system. Always remember to never be cheap with the power supply because it runs everything, and you definitely do not want your PC to catch on fire. So make sure you pick a good quality supply over a good sale price. My recommendation is the Corsair Builder 600W power supply. 600 watts is plenty for this build, and it can still be used as an upgrade if you want to upgrade your build. It's 80 plus bronze certified, which means it's a high quality power supply and it can actually help you lower your power bill. Now if you do plan on upgrading your graphics card in the future though, it will take more power, but this power supply should be able to still run anything that you need. You can get this power supply for about $50. Any optical drives and PCs are really not needed unless you want a Blu-ray drive, and mostly unless you use CDs, the only thing you'll ever use it for is to install the OS. I just went with a cheap yet reliable reader and burner, which is an ASUS. It's a simple, basic drive, and it'll only run you about $17. Now you can always upgrade to a Blu-ray drive if you want to put in an extra $40, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go with that route. Finally is the case, and once again this is where your own personal opinion or general cheapness comes in. Now sometimes computer cases can be up to the hundreds, so to keep this build moderately cheaper but still have a good number of extras, I went with the Cooler Master HAF912. 
It's a great quality case that has a clean style and it holds everything together with some really great airflow. It's your build so you can do whatever you want in terms of the case, but if you just want a cheap, reliable one, you can get this case for about $45. Well, that's it guys. This is my guide for a quality $1,000 PC that should last quite some time before it ever becomes outdated. Now, the prices of any components will change often, so I'll leave a link in the description to PCPartPicker.com. It's a website that you can use to plan out your PC build online, and you can see the lowest prices for the components that you need. That's all for this video, guys, so if you like this video and you want to see some more of them, click on the like button. I'll have three of the builds available for you guys this month, one for $500, $600, and a $750 gaming PC. Click on the links in the video if you want to see one of them. And if you enjoy my videos, you can click here to subscribe to my channel. It really does help me out, and it shows me that you want to see some more of my gaming PC builds. I also probably should mention that I started a new series of videos that I put up every week. It's a review series called Unfair Opinions, and my latest review about Iron Man 2 is located right here. Click on it if you want to watch it, and I really hope to see you guys in my next video.